Hi everyone and welcome to Wednesday's maths lesson where we're going to look once again at adding fractions. You're thinking, oh, I've already done that, but this is going to incorporate some of the stuff that we've done before. So we're going to look at improper fractions and mixed numbers as well. So converting a little bit of that must allow us a little bit more time to practice our adding of fractions. And you probably guessed that there'll be a bit of changing of denominators as well before we do those sums. So you should be very familiar with these by now. So there's your target number. There's your six numbers you've got. See how close you can get to the target or if you can get to the target itself. So pause the video and have a go at that question. All right, let's have a look. So I got to the target by, let me tick these off as I go, doing 50 add 10, which is 60, 8 add 6, which is 14, 60 times 14, which is 840, and then 840 add 1. So we had one number to spare, but we reached the target of 841. Well done if you got that. If you got that using a different method, fantastic. Okay, here's our warm-up questions. So we've used the part-whole model here, so just remember that these parts add to give this. These parts add to give this. Now it's not quite clear, but this is one quarter. So one half plus one quarter plus one half equals what? Five sevenths. Add four twenty ones, add three sevenths. You're going to have to make those denominators the same. Equals what? And this is equivalent fraction. So one fifth is worth how many fifteenths? One fifth is worth nine watts. So pause the video and have a go at those. Okay, let's look at number one. So we have one half plus one half plus one quarter, which is one and a quarter, because you know that one half and another half. Is one whole, and then you've got a quarter over that, so one and a quarter. This one, slightly different, you're gonna to have to make all those denominators the same, so we're gonna to have to make those into 20 ones. So let's see if we can reach the answer, which is 28 20 ones. So, what do you do with seven to get to 21? Seven multiplied by three is 21. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do it to the top, so five times 3 is 15 and 2 months. Here, once again, we need to get the denominators the same. What do you do is 7 gets 21, multiply it by 3. What do you do to the bottom? You do to the top. 3 times 3 is 9. So we have 15, add 4, which is 19, add 9, which is 28. Can you figure out what that is as a mixed number? So 28, 21 months is the same as 1 at 7, 20 months, because remember, there's 21, 20 months in a whole, and then you'd have 7 more on top of that, because 21 adds 7 is 28, so 1 and 7, 20 months. And now we're just looking at equivalent fractions, so what do you do with 5 to get to 15? You multiply it by 3, which means 1 times 3, whatever you do to the bottom, you, get, you do to the top is 3. So you could go back to the beginning here and do 1 times 9, or you can go from here because 9 is in the 3 times table. So 3 times 3 is 9, 15 times 3 is 45. So 1 fifth is equivalent to or the same as 3 fifteenths, which is equivalent to or the same as 9 40 fifths. Okay, so we have 5 sixths add 2 thirds making those denominators the same. 3 times 2 will give us the same denominator. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. 2 times 2 equals 4. So now we have 5 sixths and 4 sixths. So 5 add 4 is 9 sixths. So you can see there what we did. We had 5. We've had another sixth. That's going to get us to a hole. So that's over the hole now. So we're going to bring that down. Start a new hole. We have 
nine sixths. And as you can see here, remember each one of these bars is worth one hull. So that's one hull, three sixths. Or, do you recognize what that's equivalent to? Three is half of six, so it's equivalent to one half. And you can see here the half of the hull has been shaded in. So that is one and a half. Okay, let's look at this one. Three quarters and one half and seven eighths equals what? So you need to make those denominators the same. So let's make them into eighths. So what is three quarters in as eighths? What is one half as eighths? So three quarters in eighths is six eighths because three, sorry, four times two to get the eighth the eighth as the denominator, whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So three times two is six. So we have six eighths here. And then we have a half, which we know is four eighths because four is half of eight, or two times four is eight. One times four is four. Whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So now we have six eighths plus four eighths plus seven eighths. We know the denominator stays the same when we're adding them. So we have six, add four, which is 10, add seven, which is 17 eighths, which is the same as we put them all in. So that's one hole, another hole, and that is one eighth. So we have one, two holes and one eighth. Okay, let's look at this one. 11 eighteenths plus five ninths. See if you can pause the video, have a think about that, make the denominators the same, add those fractions. If you get an improper fraction, can you turn it into a mixed number? And then we'll have a look at this one. Okay, so five ninths, get that into eighteenths, nine multiplied by two, is 18, five, you have to times that by two because you times the bottom by two is 10. So 11 add 10 is 21. Eighteenths, it's 18 eighteenths in a whole. So we've got 18 and then plus, plus three, 18 plus three is 21. So we're gonna have one whole and three eighteenths. As you can see, one whole and three eighteenths. Okay, the next one, so pause the video and have a go. At this one, make those denominators the same. Okay, so we're gonna go for twelfths, twelfths this time, instead of going up to 24, because we can divide 24 and 10 by two, and then we can times the six by two to get that. So 24 divided by two is 12, 10. Divided by two, whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top, it's five. Here we've gone six times two, it's 12. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top, five times two, it's 10. So we've got 11 twelfths plus five twelfths plus 10 twelfths. Before I go on to what that equals, if you've converted these into 20 fourths, absolutely fine. As if you've simplified your fraction at the end, you will get the same answer. Okay, so 11 at 10 is 21, add 5 is 26, 26 twelfths. So now we're looking at how many twelves in 26. So if I've got my 12 times tables, 12, 24, 36. 36 is too big, so 12, 24. So there's two holes in there. I've used 24, 25, 26. There's two left over, so two holes and two twelfths. We can simplify that further because I, I notice that 2 and 12 are both in the 2 times table. So I can divide the top and the bottom by 2 to give me 2 and 1 sixth. Okay, so this is a great time to pause the video and have a go at questions 1 to 3 on the worksheet. All right, let's have a look at another question. So. As per usual, we're moving into some word problems. So it's exactly the same. It's just you've not been shown them in a number sentence. You've got them in a word sentence. Eva has some bottles of lemonade, water, and apple juice. The bottles have a mass of three kilograms 
all together. So when they're added together, it equals three kilograms. The bottles of water have a mass of seven eighths of a kilogram in total. Each bottle of lemonade has a mass of 11 sixteenths of a kilogram and Eva has two bottles of lemonade. How much do all the bottles of apple juice weigh? Okay, so you've got your total, which is three kilograms. You have your water, which is seven eighths of a kilogram, and you have your lemonade, which is two lots of 11 sixteenths of a kilogram. And it's asking you, what is the weight of the apple juice? So you know that lemonade plus water plus apple juice is three kilograms. You have the weight of the water and the lemonade. How do you think you work that out? And then we'll have a look at it together on the next slide. Right, so Eva has some, let's going to read through this together so we can represent it. Eva has some bottles of lemonade, water and apple juice. The bottles have a mass of three kilograms all together. So we've just used some shorthand here. So L for lemonade, W for water, A for apple juice. All together, they equal three kilograms. The bottles of water have a mass of seven eighths of a kilogram in total. So that's the water, seven eighths. Each bottle of lemonade has a mass of 11 sixteenths of a kilogram and Eva has two bottles of lemonade. So we've shown that. How much do all the bottles of apple juice weigh? So we know that 11 sixteenths add 11 sixteenths add 7 eighths add something is three hulls or three kilograms. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the denominators the same. So we can change our 7 eighths into 16 eighths. So 7 eighths, if you multiply 8 by 2, you'll get 16. 7, whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So 7 times 2 is going to be 14. So we have 14 16 here. So now we have 11 16 plus 11 16 plus 14 16 plus something equals 3 kilograms. We know that one hull or one kilogram is worth 16 sixteenths. So what's three worth? Two is worth 32. Three is worth 48. So we know, so we're just converting them into sixteenths. This side added together equals six. So our number sentence would be 11 sixteenths plus 11 sixteenths plus 14 sixteenths plus something equals 48. 48. I mean, we could even upset the set, but we could. And now we could ignore them and say 11 add 11 add 14 equals 48. And then we put the 16s back in at the end because we know they're going to stay the same. So 11 add 11, that's 22 plus 14 is 36. So it's 36 sixteenths plus something is 48 sixteenths. So 36 add 12 is 48. So then we have a further question. So we know that all the apple juice together weighs 12 sixteenths of a kilogram. And it tells us Eva has three bottles of apple juice. Have a think. Sorry, that's the next bit. <laughs> Eva has three bottles of apple juice. What is the mass of one bottle of apple juice? Have a think. That's how it's supposed to go. So we have this and then we need to divide it into three parts. So what's 12 divided by three? It is four, so four sixteenths of a kilogram, and you might have noticed that four sixteenths is the same as one quarter. So if you divide the top and the bottom by four, you get one quarter. So that question, there's quite a lot of parts that question, so that's a little bit complicated, but once you lay it down on a piece of paper and you make those denominators the same, it becomes a lot, lot simpler. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. Five eighths. Add two sevenths, add three eighths equals what? So we might have noticed there five eighths, add three eighths. So if you go back, you're probably looking at it thinking, oh, how do I make those denominators the same? There, there, there is a way that you can do that. However, we know that five eighths add three eighths is eight eighths, and that's the same as a whole. So it's going to be one 
and two sevenths. So you didn't need to do anything with the denominators there. So if you notice anything like that when you're doing your adding of your fractions, then use it so it makes it a lot easier for yourself. Okay, so here we have four eighteenths plus three thirteenths plus seven ninths. So here we've got four eighteenths and seven ninths. If we make those denominators the same, so seven ninths is fourteen eighteenths, so nine times two. Use the bottom, use the top, so seven times two is fourteen, so fourteen eighths, eighteenths plus four eighteenths. Oh, it's the same as one hull. So we have one hull, three thirteenths. So once again, if I saw that initially, I might be thinking, oh my goodness, how do I make 18, 13, and 9 the same? Get those denominators the same. But in actuality, if you convert these into 18s, you'll notice that if you add the 18s together, it's the same as one hull. So you don't have to do any complicated changing of denominators because you don't have to make 13 somehow equal 18 or 9, or you don't have to do 13 times 9 or 13 times 18 to work it out. Phew! Right, I believe this is the last question. So we have something 20 fourths, had something twelfths, and something quarters equals 29 20 fourths. So let's put these into 20 fourths, okay? We have to equal 29 altogether. So a, there are a number of options here. But you have to think carefully. So if we have three twenty-fourths there, we're going to have twenty-six twenty-fourths left over because three and twenty-six is twenty-nine. So how would we split them between them? So we could have fourteen in there and twelve in there. Let's go through quickly. Okay, I just want to check something because I need to do explain this right so when we put our 20 fourths in this one we need to know that it's divisible by 2 because 24 divided by 2 is 12 so this means this has to be an even number when we put our 20 fourths in here it has to be divisible by 6 so this number has to be in the twos this number has to be in the sixths. So that's 14. Yeah, that's definitely the twos, even number. That's 12. That's definitely in the sixes because six times two is 12. Then we can work out these. So 24 to six divided by six. So we're going to have to divide that by six, divided by two to get there. You have to divide by two to get there. So always go back to the original. So 3 twenty fourths at 7 twelfths plus 2 quarters equals 29 twenty fourths. Bonus question. I know the next one is getting on with the task, but what is that? Is a mixed number. Remember, you know that 24 twenty fourths is a whole. So that's one whole. How many do you add to 24 to get to 29? We add 5. So 1. 5 24 so well done if you work that out okay your assignment has been assigned to you on teams or tapestry have a go at those check against the answer sheets if you get stuck make sure you ask at the feedback sessions thank you very much for listening to your maths lesson